Next up, I want to introduce Raina Matthew. She is a principal architect in our quality engineering team. She uh, runs our test automation program. She's also been a product owner, owner for various teams who work on uh, developer and engineer productivity tools. And uh, she is going to tell you about how we do test automation at scale. Testing, testing. That's why I'm a quality engineer. Um, so, just to give a little bit of background, I'm a principal architect. Oh, sorry, principal architect at uh, Salesforce.com. Uh, I've been with Salesforce almost six years right now. Uh, my previous uh, experience, I was a software developer, and then I actually moved over into quality engineering. Um, I like, you know, the coding aspects, but I think breaking the system actually really was quite appealing to me. <laughs> and so that's how I actually ended up in quality engineering. So um, the topic we're going to discuss here is like, as we said, Salesforce, we have these great set of product managers that design these great products. And then we have the developers who are building, you know, exactly what the product managers define. <laughs> and then we have our great documentation team that actually documents what the expected behavior is for our customers. But guess what? When we do multiple releases and we make changes, things are likely to change. And that's why we have an extensive suite of tests that actually make sure that we do not break that behavior in any case because it's just uh, we need to make our customers successful and this is what helps us. So I want to talk a little bit about this, um, what we mean by scale. So when I was asked to talk about this in 10 minutes, I was like, oh, just like Janine said, it's really difficult to cover everything. So I just wanted to call out, like, what are the different dimensions that we're talking about at scale? So we'll cover these a little bit in the next few slides, but there's various dimensions that we need to take, talk about, the multiple products that we are building, the various releases that we do for our products, for our customers, and just our R&D organization. So I'll talk about these. So, this is pretty a little bit outdated slide, but Salesforce started as a CRM company, customer relationship management. And then now we're in the service cloud space, we're in the sales, I mean, marketing cloud, collaboration. We have multiple products now. And Janine sort of highlighted how our architecture is. The beauty of our architecture is really we have a general foundation on which all these customizations happen. And beyond that, our customers can customize what they want for their different areas. So there's a lot of products and there's a lot of dependencies between these products. So we need to ensure that we don't break these dependencies that you know, our customers rely on. Our release cycle. So you know, it takes a lot to make a release happen and successful. And we have three major releases in a year and we never, try, we never miss that deadline. So our goal is to ensure that every team sort of plans what they can deliver for that release. If you cannot meet that release, it's okay. You, you meet that you take the next trade. So with all these major releases that happen, our test automation is what actually ensures that at any point of time, we think we are, we're really highly confident with the quality of the release. We have a huge set of customers. Um, we have small business customers and we have enterprise level customers. And these customers rely on us for their business uh, you know, uh, processes that they you know, working on daily. And for us, we cannot afford to break any of these customers. They're investing a lot on, in Salesforce for the products that they're relying on for their success. So it's really key for us to make sure we make these customers successful. And now about the Salesforce you know, research and development organization that builds these fabulous products, we have around 150 plus scrum teams spread across the world. Even though our headquarters in Salesforce, we have teams across the world. And we need a system that makes sure as 24 seven, we are able to support them to make sure at any point of time, any engineer at any part of the world feels like they can check in their code and feel confident about the quality of the release. So this is a huge deal for us. Um, so, I gave several reasons why it's so critical for our test automation to scale for the various dimensions I just mentioned, but I just want to highlight the number one thing, customer trust. 
as you know, so the presenters just said, our customer success is our success, and that's how we define, you know, that's the value that we really treasure, and our test automation is one aspect that helps us deliver that trust for our customers. So how do we go about doing this? So this is the general Salesforce workflow we have. It's pretty much standard everywhere. You know, develop, the engineers actually write their code, they get code reviews done, um, then, you know, we submit it into our centralized, you know, repository. Uh, we build the product, the various products, depending on the change list. We run the various test suites. If there are any test failures, we immediately try to report that to the engineers so they can fix them immediately. So this is the regular cycle that we have. And we have different systems that actually are built in-house to sort of support this workflow. So there's a lot going on to support the engineers in this organization for this test automation. So I'm just gonna call out a few of the aspects that help us scale that might be useful for other companies. So our test automation, we pretty much use a lot of the open source tools that are out there. Um, JUnit, which is a foundation for any you know, API-based testing and even our UI testing. We use Cilium, which is built on top of JUnit. We use other tools like Clover. So we try to rely on most of the open source tools out there, but we definitely do have enhancements on top of this to make sure that we are more productive. So this is one system that we have called pre-check-in system. So this ensures that at any point of time, the Salesforce code line that we have is always, you know, it's always green. You can always build the product. So this ensures any engineer, whenever they actually try to get the latest code base, they are guaranteed that the build will work. It's, it's not going to disrupt their productivity. And what this system actually does is it takes the files that the engineer is working on and actually builds it and runs a predefined set of tests. So the engineer just feels, hey, I'm going to check in something. I feel pretty confident. I'm going to go for a party or anything like that. But this is what gives them a sense of confidence. Hey, my change is going to be fine. I said we have a predefined set of tests, but we also allow engineers to select what set of tests that they would like to check, select. And because they might have more insight, A, for this particular feature that I'm working on, I know I need to actually run tests for this other areas. So we allow them to customize what they want to run. But this actually keeps our engineers sane at night, and actually keeps a lot of our quality engineers sane at night, because when any engineer checks in, you can feel guaranteed that when I'm going to actually test a product the next day, I can feel confident that there's no major regressions. So, there's a, we have a huge suite of tests, and we run around like million tests per day for every change list, and we want to actually deliver the results as soon as possible. So, you can imagine there's a huge VM farm that we have behind to actually power this whole automation. Um, we work with, we have our own internal VM infrastructure that we use, um, and that's what we definitely rely on. But sometimes we have a, a, a surge of check-ins. Like when we have some deadlines, you know, a lot of engineers towards the deadline, they want to check in more stuff. So instead of investing in the infrastructure to address that, we actually use Amazon, other public clouds, to actually run our tests there. So as far as the users are concerned, there's no difference. But in the background, this is what we do. Um, so the test automation team that maintains this, uh, these different clouds, we realize it's really difficult to work with multiple clouds. So now we're moving over to actually use JClouds, which is this open source tool that actually makes your system work with any cloud. So this gives us the possibility that we can work with any Liam infrastructure in the future. I want to call it Sauce Lab. So as you know, every day, every week, there's a new browser. There's a new browser version. There are new devices. It really, it's difficult to scale your infrastructure to actually test all those devices. And so now we have a partnership with Sauce Labs so that we can actually easily run our tests with all the various combinations out there. So that's something that we really look forward to. Test thresholds. This is something that, you know, is a bit touchy with our engineers. Um, you know, it's difficult to keep all your tests passing, especially when you're making changes. There's a likelihood you're going to break something. But, you know, what our engineers really love is, oh, it found the bug. It didn't go out to production, and the customers found the bug, but our test suite just gives up. So it's a good thing when you find a test failure, because you have to, you know, you know address that. But it's, this is something that we have. So 
we try to have 100% pass rates for most of our critical tests. We are a bit tolerant for the corner cases and tests that are probably not, not that <laughs> critical, but even then we have a 99%. So it's a pretty high threshold that we have. But there are several challenges to make sure that you can keep those. So, oh, sorry, thanks. So I have one more minute. So we have a concept called lock the line. Um, it sounds sort of harsh, but it's sort of like a gentle reminder to the teams. Teams, you have, you know, a lot of test failures. Make sure you fix this because our goal is to ensure that we are fixing the bugs proactively. Because the natural intent is you want to finish the feature, the, the deadline's coming. But this is a reminder, hey, you have bugs. Make sure you fix them. So at any point in time, our, we try to keep our thresholds at really high. So anybody who's actually building on top of those dependencies actually knows that I feel confident it's going to work fine. So this is what we do to ensure that we keep the code line pretty clean. So the last thing, we build the product, we test the product, and we feel confident we release it to production. So this is when our customers get to use it. And so we don't stop our testing internally. We continue to test even after we deploy. So we actually run tests with every major release that we do, and even beyond the releases on a nightly, regular basis, we actually run the same set of tests to ensure that most of the services that we have. So this particular page is our trust page, which is the core thing that our customers actually always look at to make sure all their services are up and running. This is actually the core value that we have, trust. And even though we have checks at the hardware level, network level, everything, the tests that we run here just make sure that every service as such works efficiently. So this is how, you know, from the start, when the engineer actually starts building the product, all the way to production, how we ensure that, you know, we feel confident what our customers are using. Yeah, that's it. Can you, can you share if you guys outsource any of your testing, or do you do it all internally? We don't outsource any of our testing. The only sort of testing we probably not it's not really outsource, it's usability testing that but that's just to get the user feedback, but nothing else. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Rena.